Greetings, brothers and sisters, and to all those who love our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the cause of Christ. Uh, we are going to continue our Bible lesson about the establishment of the church. We want to look at which city was the church established first, and um, when was the church established, and also um, uh, and then the fact that Christ cannot establish the church without the shedding of his blood. And then we also want you to recall on our first video that we talk about the prophecy of the church and its establishment. And we talk about the last days, what is meant by the last days. So if you have watched the first video, I hope uh, you've got the concept. Now we want to continue about this lesson and we want to look at the board and then look at Jesus' promise to build his church. You see, Isaiah gave the prophecy when Christ came, he promised also to build his church. And he did that in, in, in Matthew. In Matthew chapter 16, we did that in Matthew chapter 16, um, Matthew 16, verse 13 to verse 18. And this is when Jesus came to the coast of Philippi. He asked his disciples, whom do men say that I, the son of man, is? Let, let me use one, one thing. Whom do men say that the son of man is? And he said, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah. And then Jesus asked the disciples, and then Simon the Bajona, he said, Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you but my Father who is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou bound on the earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou lose on the earth shall be lose in heaven. So here, is the case that Christ came and he made it very clear, he made it very clear to his audience and to all of us who are now privileged to have the teaching of Christ, that he will build his church. He made it very clear. Now, now let's go back to the question that ecclesia means the call out from the Greek. And therefore, when Christ called the disciples, the twelve and other disciples, that is the church. From Christ's perspective, that is not the church. Because Christ used the word, I will. He said, I will build my church. I will build my church. I will give to you the kingdom of heaven. You see, Christ said, I will build my will. Will praises the church in the future. So, in effect, whoever group Christ is having, they are a very nice group, but that is not the church in the mind of Christ. The Empire Trinity said, Greek Kesana ye Christian, a Christian that just said, call out ye frefre, one ye ye group be a class of no. And yet the meaning no, and an Christ a you ha. Because almost no new mujira hono. So almost na a almost ye asafuna, that Christ and cancer 
Messi Marathon, Messi HSS Dache, I will miss future. Sa omoni as a funa, and can Christ back and say, Winnie Peter, Messi Marathon, or that a Peter, I have built my church. But because this group is not what is in the mind of Christ to mean the church, as further studies will show that Christ should share his blood before this church can be in the assistant. Therefore, they cannot be the church. Therefore, Christ said, I will do my church. And it, 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 it's very simple. Every high school student will know that the word will means future. You can make any argument. You can uh, try to disprove this uh, from other sources and other things. It doesn't make it any change. It doesn't change anything. The will there means future. Unless you don't want to accept what the Bible is saying. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Let me underline this here. So here, Christ is saying, I will, meaning future. Christ used similar words sometimes. So if you don't believe that this is future, let's look at what Christ used in John chapter 14. Uh, verse 1 to verse 3. In John 14, verse 1 to verse, let's say verse 5. That said, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If not, so I will not have told you. And I will go and prepare a place for you. I will come again. I will. Look at this key concept here. So I will means future, brothers and sisters. If you are in the lost church and you are teaching that Christ's group of people at this time is the church, then you have to learn more. You, you, you need to go and make more research in that. Or if someone has taught you that the church is in existence right now, without Christ going to the cross, then you still need to go and learn more because the Bible and Christ are disproving you. Christ, when Christ used any word that I will, it means the future. And therefore we are saying that when Christ said, I will build my church, he places the church in the future. I hope this part is very well understood. Let's move on. To the next part and see. So Christ now is going to tell the apostles something, something which is very, very important concerning the prophecy we learned in Isaiah chapter 2 and Micah chapter 2 on our first uh, video that he is going to bring more light more light to that prophecy. So in Luke chapter 24, verse 44 to verse 49, Jesus told the apostles that repentance and remission of sins will begin in Jerusalem. Now, here is the case. Christ is telling his apostles and the rest of his disciples that Repentance and remission of sins will be preached in his name. And this is going to begin in Jerusalem. Now, when, when you read about the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 2, you saw that Isaiah said, The word of the Lord will start from Jerusalem. We are coming closer to that. Here, Christ has started that and these are the words which I spoke with you, what I was still with you. That all things written about me in the book of Psalms, in the prophets, and in the book of the law might be fulfilled. And the Bible says that he, the Bible is saying that, then he said unto them that it is necessary, now it is necessary that Christ should suffer and rise from the dead. Until this thing happens, the church 
cannot be in existence. Fellow brothers and fellow preachers and fellow friends and audience, those who are following this important lesson, the church cannot be in existence until Christ suffer and rise out from the dead. That repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. Now we will come there and we will see that all nations will flow into it. Isaiah said it. So we will go and look at that. And then he said, Behold, I send the promise of my father unto you. By you tell it in the city of Jerusalem. Go and wait in the city of Jerusalem at this point in the church history, uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the biblical history, Christ has already died. He has resurrected. He is within his 40 days he spent on the earth, preparing the apostles for the great mission which is going to start in Acts chapter 2. So at this point in history, Christ has resurrected and that he is teaching them that they should go and wait in the city of Jerusalem until they are endured with power from high. Now, let's look at our lesson. He said, note, note, he said, note, Jerusalem is where the remission of sin under the New Testament will begin. Jerusalem is where the remission of sin under the New Testament will begin. And that means that the, 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 that means that the remission of sins, the starting of the lost church is going to start in the city of Jerusalem and it's going to really happen. And while we move further, we are now going to look at the fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah. So get ready uh, for that. Now let's look at the fulfillment of Isaiah and Micah prophecy in Isaiah chapter 2 verse 3 and verse 1 to verse 4. And that is so obvious, so interesting that the Lord God that we serve is a true God. He will never say anything. That will never happen. And if you want to follow the Lord God step by step and do his will, he will reveal a lot of things to you. And we are so glad to have you on this teaching. We want you to learn and then spread it so that we all stand in the truth. You see, so here, let's look at the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 2 and its fulfillment concerning the church. Now, the, in Isaiah chapter 2, he said the last days, the Bible teaches us in Acts chapter 2 verse 16 that that was the year 33 AD, which we've already talked about this in our first video, that it was the year 33 AD because Peter in Acts 2 verse 16 to verse 17, he quoted the prophet Joel when he was accused that he was drunk, that we are not drunk, but this is what was written by the prophet Joel, and that was Joel chapter 2 verse 28, that Joel said this is how it will happen in the last day. So in effect, Peter is saying what is happening to them on this day of Pentecost was the last day. And we describe that day as the year 33 AD. From this year up to now, which is the year 2023, we are still in the last days. We, we don't actually know when Christ will come. But the weather event means that we are getting closer. So, now, the Bible says that Isaiah said, on that day, there will be all nations. All nations will flow into it. All nations. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 5, the Bible teaches us that there were dwelling in Jerusalem all nations under heaven on the day of Pentecost in the year 33 AD 
People from all over the world, God did it that way. To, that the prophecy has to be fulfilled. That they were dwelling in Jerusalem, all nations under heaven. And as I said, on that day, all nations will come. And as I said, the word of the Lord will start in Jerusalem. In Acts 2 verse 5, he said, they were dwelling in Jerusalem. This event is happening in Jerusalem. The Isaiah patron is saying. The Isaiah patron is saying. Sam Reno, Amen in our Babel, and Pansu, as to no Amen in our. Or say, a messy last day, they are trapped for you. Or say, as Nakopan Samuel, a repentance and remission of sin, a better as you were in Jerusalem, as some way so, Jerusalem, and an AC. Now, as I have said, that the people will say, let us go to the house of the Lord. He said, when this happened, those people will hear the message and they will say, let us go to the house of the Lord, to the God of Jacob, for he will teach us his way. Let us go to the house of the Lord. In Acts chapter 2, verse 37, the Bible says that the people were praying in the house, near heart. And they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Because they asked Peter, men and brethren, what shall we do? They want to go to the house of the Lord. And Peter said, repent. And be baptized for the remission of your sin. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So here is the case. The prophecy of Isaiah said, the people will ask this question. Yes, they did ask. And he said, for he will teach us his way. He will teach us his way. He will teach us his way. In Acts 2 verse 41 to verse 42. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' teaching in doctrine and in fellowship and in the breaking of bread. He is teaching them this way. So here is the case, the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 2, verse 41 to 42 has been fulfilled. Now this was fulfilled in the year 33 AD. Now, this is the beginning of the church. This is the first time the blood was applied to 3,000 people who were baptized on that day. Now, let's make it very much more in a layman's day. That at 11.59 p.m., at that time, the church has not yet established according to the Jewish calendar. Okay? Because it is still not 33 AD. It is not, it's still not uh, the, the, uh, the day of Pentecost. So let's take 0000, zero, zero, zero military time, which is 12 midnight. In our calendar here, it will be 12 midnight. Okay? So in 12 midnight, this is the beginning of the church. Aha! And as a Because at this point, you know, Christ's blood has already been shed. And the benefit of it is going to be applied to man. And this is going to begin in the city of Jerusalem. In the city of Jerusalem. And from this time on, the church was said to be in existence. So here, let, let's take a little bit an analysis of this. The fulfillment of Christ's statement. Luke chapter 24, Acts 1 verse 5 and Acts 2 37. Peter identified this day as the beginning. We will come to that. But let's look at all these things being fulfilled on this day. That 3,000 people on this day were baptized. And the Bible says that they were added to the, 
the apostles. And Acts 2 verse 47 says that, And the Lord added to the church. So right now, it's not I will again. Now the thing is in existence. So the Lord added to the church daily those who are to be saved. So let, let's see something. So here, in, in, uh, in Matthew chapter 16, I will. In Acts chapter 2, the Lord is adding people to the church. So between these two times, the church has been established. Now, from this time onwards, you will not hear anything, I will build my church anymore, or the church is in the future. The church is described to be in existence. So, as I have said, that let us go to the house of the Lord. Now, when you read your Bible in 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, Paul said that this house of the Lord is the church. He said this house of the Lord is the church. He told Timothy in 1 Timothy 3, verse 15, that I'm writing you this things, that if I tell you long, that you may know how you should behave yourself in the house of the Lord, the mountain of the Lord's house. If I tell it long, you might know how you should behave yourself in the house of the Lord, which is the church, the pillar and the ground of truth. So prophecy, it has been fulfilled. And the church was established in the year 33 AD, not before, not after that. It was established, the beginning of the church in the city of Jerusalem. Now, if, if you have been taught anything other than this, you can just investigate what I'm teaching you and find out yourself whether what I'm telling you is true. Or it's not true. You, you have to be like those in burial. They investigated Paul to find out what he's telling them is true or not. As a Bible student and as someone who needs salvation for your soul, in this modern world of millions of false prophets propagating false doctrine, you need to investigate. So you can investigate me and then you can, you know, bring any question on this thing and then we'll be able to answer you. But the fact is that if you have been taught that the church was in existence before the year 33 AD, that is not right. Now let's look at the last concept here that Peter in Acts chapter 11, Acts chapter 11 verse 15, Identify the event in Acts chapter, in Acts chapter 2 or the year 33 AD that it is the beginning. Here is an inspired apostle telling you and I that what happened in Acts chapter 2, what happened there on the day of Pentecost is referred as the beginning. So, in Acts 11 verse 15, it is the beginning of the church. The church began. Peter said that is the beginning. In the household of Cornelius, when he was accused of going there, he told his, his fellow Jews that this thing happened to them. Guess how it happened to us in the beginning in Acts chapter 2. Now, we will continue the third part of our video. And I hope the first video and the second video is bringing your mind to the concept of the lost church. When Christ came on the earth, he didn't leave us without anything. He left a church for us. And the church was established in the year 33 AD. The apostles were the beginners of those church and then they baptized people and added them to the church. The church has been in existence. It is a lost church. It was not built by human beings and it is a true church and you can always identify it 
as further studies will show. But the lesson is to show you the prophecy of the church and its establishment, and that it was established in the year 33 AD in the city of Jerusalem. And that if anybody has told you anything otherwise, that the church was in effect or in, 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 in focus, or the church began before 33 AD, is not true. It's not a biblical concept. So my mission here is to bring your mind to this. It's very, very important. As we continue, we will look at the other part of the argument that Christ needs to share his blood before the church can be established. I hope you are enjoying this lesson and you share this lesson with your friends and your fellow Christians. If you are a member of the Lost Church, this could be a revision for you. But if you don't know it, well, you, you are learning it. You should learn it. If you are not a Lost Church member, you can learn and study and then you, you can ask more questions or visit in the Church of Christ close by and they will be able to help you and explain further things for you. May God bless you for giving me this time and listening to me and I hope you learn the third video. God bless you and open our minds to his Bible car concept. The beginning of the church started in the year 33 AD. God bless you. We'll meet next time. The friend in Jesus is everything to me. He is the fairest of ten thousands to my soul. The little of the folly in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole.